Some version 8 offers a new force definition with a lot of freedom to choose profiles and dependencies. Here I will show a force profile that depends on the position of a node. In this demo I also will show how to set up a profile without doing a lot of administration to get a nice force function. We start with a simple knee press. In sum we want to simulate the progressively increasing force at the end of the stroke here, where the actual forming or cutting will happen. We can see it here at the final result. I will start from scratch now. So here we see a knee press. And I will, the goal is to create a table with three columns. And it should look like this at the end. The first column is the, the Y position of the press. Second column is the force table, which is all zero now in this example. And the third column should be 90, minus 90 degrees. That's our goal. So I will show you now how to create these columns. The first one is the Y position. We select it here and we choose for the relative y position and it's shown here. So this is the vertical position of the press. Second will be a column with the zeros and we can choose anything but we choose for displacement in x direction of the node 4 which will be 0. We can see it here, it is 0. All the time. The third column is needed to be minus 90 degrees and therefore I created this dummy element which is just a static element and we use the angle of this beam. And here we see also the minus 90 degrees in this blue curve. To create a table we use the built-in export, export facility of SAM. Be aware, anything you wish to export needs to be on the graph at the left panel. We choose for results, export, and here we see the available export items. Mind you, not to choose the header, fixed point, show listing. Here, the first is the Y position of the punch, the second is the dummy zeros and the third column is the angle of 90 degrees. So we say OK and we choose the override the table as shown before and here we see the table as it is just created. OK. First we will check if it all works. So we will apply a force now using the table. Choose for force, pick the element, the node one, we import the table. Here's the table we just created. And we choose for the current units. I didn't talk about that, but that's now the best way. And here we have to be aware of choosing property, function of any property. And here we choose the node and that's by accident number one. You can see it here. And we choose the y, relative y position. So here we see the column of the force being zero all the place until the bottom. And we see the 90 degrees. So we say OK. And now we see the force over here. So we can modify it later on. Now we can start to edit the table and put at the end some specific force points. But um, to make it easier now for this demo, 
I import a modified table and we will see that I've changed a few values here at the end so and I've made by hand an extremely exponential rising function and then we will see what happens next we will compare the force in the punch to the force in the cylinder and we will select the needed force items the first one is the force in this node at y direction which is seen here this is the force in fact we have applied via the force table and we are going to compare it with a force normal force in the cylinder the driving cylinder and we see now the two values and we see the knee effect of the knee press that is a big uh, multiplier to the force in the punch one remark about the table is to be aware that in previous versions of SUM we needed a synchronous table compared to the steps of the mechanisms so here the rows 1, 2, 3 should be exactly in the same time steps as the mechanism kinematics in some version 80 that's no longer necessary so we can remove any row here if you like we can remove a few rows it doesn't matter because synch synchronicity is not needed anymore this is what we can see here okay this this was the demo thank you